Well, guys, maybe it's just me, but there's something primal, isn't there, about grabbing some tools and fixing something around you when it's broken? It's good stuff, right? Sometimes it's not broken. Sometimes you just want to change, like painting, for instance. It's a good thing, right? It's a DIY Wednesday. We're at Lowe's here on number one Augusta Highway in West Columbia. Ron Fitz, good morning, my friend. Good morning, Tyler. So we're talking about painting, you know, a splash of color with E, right? You can change oh, the whole whole feel of a room. Give for it a sure. whole different outlook. That's right. But there's a lot of choices, a lot of things you got to consider. Let's start over here at the wall. I mean, first thing, of course, is what color do you want? What do I want for a room? Sky's the limit. And you can, I mean, you can go different tones and textures. What's the best way to, to come in? I know you guys can actually, you can come in like with a chip, right? You can match a color if I have a color or I can pick something new. Absolutely. If you got, uh, you have something that is a room that you, uh, you're trying to match the paint on. If you okay. can get us a piece like about a one inch square of paint off of that and bring that on in, we have right. a color matching system that cool. put that chip into and we can match that color. If you're looking for something start new. Start fresh right here. Uh, this, this is a cool tour right here. If you're gonna start fresh, this is really neat. You gotta make sure your light, cause different, different lighting in different rooms, your bathroom, your kitchen, your living room may have different lights. So when you take something, uh, take one of your samples here, you can put it under the light and you can really see the difference in how that light actually is gonna look. I mean, all of a sudden, boom, that is not white anymore. That's all of a sudden yellow with an incandescent light. So you want to make sure that you got that selection. Take a look at your light bulb. Find out what type of color you have on the light bulb that right. you have in the room that you're going to be painting. There you uh, go. Very important to know that before we come in and pick a color. All right. Next thing, once you got your color picked out, is what kind of paint do you want? And that matters what room it's going to go into, everything like that. And it starts, of course, out with primer. Primer. If you have a brand new room, mm -hmm. um, you, you've added on, you've built a new room, you've got right. a new primer, you always want to start out with a PVA primer. That's PVA the, primer, okay. PVA primer. That's in mm -hmm. this. That's going to seal that drywall up. It's right. not going to allow the paint to absorb into it. And it's that's important to do. And again, that's on fresh walls. Like if you, if you add a new room or change, or, or you, ha you have a brand new house with drywall or you know with plywood or whatever else. Yep. Okay. All right. If you've got a room that's already been painted once, um, we're going to change the color on it. All paint manufacturers recommend that you put a primer over but that. What about paint? paint with primer? You still should use a primer anyway. Even with that, it gives it okay. the best results if you primer it first. Right. Um, so that you can pick a, a primer. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Valspar Kilts and Bullseye Zizzer. Sure. Um, are they pretty much all the same? Are primers, you, or is there something you want consideration when you look at a primer? Uh, I always use the Valspar myself. Okay. Um, kilts have been out there forever. Sure. Excellent paint. So just a brand uh, brand decision. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then finally, when you get to where it is, what are the different the different uh, finishes? Because like I said, with a kitchen or a bathroom, it's a little different maybe than a living room, right? Oh, definitely. So in, what do you want to use for that kind of stuff? In a bathroom, a kitchen area where there's going to be a lot of cleaning mm -hmm. uh, of the walls, scrubbing of the walls, you're going to want to use something with a more durable surface, something like uh, a semi-gloss on, okay. the, on the trim areas, um, like an eggshell uh, okay. finish on the walls. Okay, and that eggshell is more of a flat kind of finish? Or uh, is that a shiny, cleanable one? The semi-gloss, the gloss semi-gloss are going to okay. be the shiny ones. Okay, and so I can take a sponge maybe clean that off if I have to. I mean, I don't know if I, I have, have to shake it up, but... Yep. All right, guys, so we're talking paint selection here, deciding what room you're going to paint, of course, the selection of the color, and then the kind of paint you want for where it's going to go. We're going to talk about the technique, the tools you need as well if you want to paint this weekend. We're going to get you all hooked up today on a DIY Wednesday. We're live at Lowe's here on Augusta Highway in West Columbia. Stay with us. All right, guys, it is a DIY Wednesday. We're live and local right here at Lowe's on number one in West Columbia. Talking about painting. So you want to paint, I don't know, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, whatever you want. A lot of choices you can make about the paint color and, of course, the type of paint you want, some considerations. We're going to talk about that a little later, what you do. But first, you've got to get all the gear you need to do it right. Ron here from uh, Lowe's. Ron, let's go ahead and start down here. Let's kind of go through the things, that the must-haves, I guess. If you're going to come in and you want to paint you this weekend, start with the must-haves. I guess we can start basically with kind of the preparation areas, right? Um, yep, we have uh, sanding sponges here. Okay. Um, you need those for finishing up your and and. Uh, sanding what what down is here. a sanding? How do you use that? I guess you do that in, in uh, with a repair kit. If you've got a hole or you've got a little issue in your drywall. If you're going to patch or repair some drywall first, okay. you're going to want to put some spackling um, or drywall mud on that. Once okay. you've applied that, um, after that dries, um, you're going to need to sand it back down flat. Okay. Um, this is a nice uh, edging sponge. Uh, let's get right tight into a corner. It's like a, it's like a SOS soap head it's on just on steroids. like sandpaper, okay. but on a sponge, and the things last forever if you take care of them. That's great. Okay. Of course, the next thing you want to do is you don't want to get the paint where you don't want it, so that becomes edging tape. Exactly. Um, you're going to need some sort of a, a tape, frog tape here, uh, real good tape. This is just a multi-surface. This is for delicate surfaces. Okay. So that you're not uh, damaging that surface all, but you're going to sure. want to tape it off. Everything off. Um, of course, some buckets, all kinds of buckets. Yeah, all kinds of buckets. This is actually a neat one. They got some cool things. Of course, you know, paintbrushes we'll get into as well. But everybody's kind of laid the, the paintbrushes like this. Uh, buckets. Look at this. They have a little magnet inside. And there you go. Leave your paintbrush right in there, and you got the can. And it's cool if it is. If you don't have a can like that, you also have the clip-on version. 
for a regular can, and boom, leave your brush right in there when you step away. You don't have to lay it off the side and have it leak everywhere. That's kind of a cool little thing. What about brushes? Is there anything to the br kind of brush you want? Um, you're going to want a brush for the size of the job you're painting. If you're doing okay. um, delicate trim, you're going to want like an, ele an edging brush, something smaller. If you're doing larger surfaces, you get a larger brush. Okay, let's give you a little um, more. Of course, you've got better the better quality brush, the longer it'll last. You've got the edger as well. Edger for doing is, right there, is there something too? Because you can get 99 cent brushes, or you can get five dollar brushes. Is there something to the, your paint job in the end, going the extra mile, spending a couple of dollars, even though you get a 99 cent brush? Why? Why does it make a difference? Yeah, just the texture of the paint when it's all done. It, it, um, a better brush will put down a better surface. So just like anything, you put your money into, you get what you pay for, kind of thing. Yes. Yes, all right, very good. This is kind of cool. We're going to show you this later on. This is a neat little sponger for different techniques for like kids' room, where you want to do something cool. Texturing. We're yeah. going to talk about how to use that as well. But ye old paint tray. You need these, right? This yeah, this cool. one's really cool. This was a Teflon tray. Um, paint, uh, put your paint in there, mm -hmm. roll it on. Uh, when you're done, you just let it dry, and right. as you see here, oh, the wow. Teflon, it peels the paint right back out of there after it dries. That is awesome. Just peel it right off. There you go, guys. Of course, uh, the regular rollers, for what you can do, you got your fun one, you got the regular rollers, and a drop cloth. Now, they, they always say use a cloth as opposed to on um, plastic. Why is that? Um, it lays down better. It's okay. less slippery. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it's easier to deal with yeah, overall, so the, get some paint, drop cloths. If it hits a cloth, it usually goes right into it. Paint on plastic stays on plastic for a minute. Right. Step in it, you track it around. There you go. You got all the tracks you want that. Some of the basic gear you need to get painting uh, and change rumor on a DIY do-it-yourself Wednesday. We're going to get to uh, prepping and actually painting today as well. He's got some secrets we're going to share today on Good Day Columbia. Stay with us live and local. Lowell's in West Columbia. It's a DIY Wednesday here on Good Day Columbia. That means do it yourself, right? And all kinds of great home projects. Something very cool about that. Well, today we're talking about painting. What if you want to paint a room in your house or maybe you got a new house you want to add a, a room on or whatever you like. So we've got a wall. Eric here made us a right fine wall but we got some issues and Ron is going to help us with the issues. First of all, so you got this wall here. We've got a couple of things, Ron, we've got to talk about. We've got a little, we've got an issue. we got a little hammer mark or maybe uh, had something stick in there. What can we do about that? Well, we can patch that right up. All right. How do we do that now? Well, we're going to have to get some spackle here. Okay. And this spackle is kind of cool, guys, too, because, of course, you want the spackle to dry before you do anything with it. But the neat thing about this is it's pink right now, but when it dries, it turns white. It is. It is. If you want to hang on to that one Sure, second. I'll hang on to the dummy end of the spackle, but as they say. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have anything on the edges sticking up. The paper, you want to make sure that that's down um, because you're not going to want to have that sticking up through your spackle. So you just sort of smack that down a little bit with a oh, hammer. Wow. Okay. Just like that. See, a lot of noise. You can tell it's built right if there's a lot of noise going on. All right. That's uh, really easy. Take a little bit of goo and you just patch a hole just like that. And a little extra doesn't matter because we're going to sand that flat. Okay. And how long does it take to dry generally? Of course, you look for the white color. Uh, this is about 15 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. All right. So the next thing, of course, is ye old painter's tape. You're going to paint the edges. You want to make sure you uh, you tape off your edges and all that stuff as well. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to, let's say we're going to paint right here because we want to prime it as well. We talked earlier about the effect. This is a new, fresh piece of drywall. So it's a different concern. So like that. And let's put this here. All right. So we want to paint. We want to go ahead and do that because that's our spot, right? Okay. What do we do now? Well, once you're painted, you're going to have uh, make sure that your paint or your oh, primer on, is get, nice I gotta, and. I got to put my. Uh, I got to put my go. official. <laughs> I am like official now. There we go. I don't want to get any paint on me. There you are. All right. So when you go to prime, go ahead. Let me. I'll reach in there and try this. When you go to prime, how much primer do you want to put on? Um, en enough to just cover the surface. Enough totally. to cover you the surface. Brush that up there on the side. <laughs> yeah. There you See, go. I just go toward his pork as my dad just said. So it is. It's not like painting. This well, is you're going to just longer. The longer the strokes, the, the I'm gonna go this better way, it's going to look. There and actually, yes, when you're painting, you're going to want to go, if you, if you do a multiple coats, you're going to want to go right. one direction. And then the other? And then the other. All right. So is that thick enough on a, on a primer? I mean, you can still see the Continental building behind it. Is that We're thick not enough trying to have everything covered okay. with that. We're just trying to seal the paper okay. from absorbing. And the other thing you want to do, paint. once you get this, and of course, you're going to lay, put another layer on, but if this was your top paint, you want to go ahead and peel that painter's tape off right now so it doesn't actually if, peel off when it dries. If you were dries. finished, yes you can. So there you go, just like that. And you have a nice perfect little square. Very easy like that. So after you do that, how long do you want your primer to, to uh, dry for before you lay on the well, first coat? Different primers have different recommendations, but definitely read your, your container. Okay. Uh, it will tell you on there. Um, but you want it totally dry Make sure it's dry good and dry. Good and dry. So it's, it's sometimes going to be a multiple day process. It's not like a Sunday afternoon project painting. You're going to take a couple of days, right? Um, no, actually you can prime. Um, and a couple hours later, oh, okay. at the absolute longest, a couple like hours that. later, you can be All right, guys. Painting. Well, simple like that. 
duct and taping. This is already dry. Oh, look at that. See, it's already dry on the edges. There you go. Spackling, fixing the walls up. We'll show you how to finish that off here in a few minutes. And we're going to get actually to the painting and the cool stuff you can do, including some painting techniques, rollers, and brushes, and whatnot. It's a DIY Wednesday. We are live at Lowe's in West Columbia. Stay with us. I like this wall, man. You put like a poster up here of J Lo or something. I like it. Better. Well, guys, one of the things, of course, you don't want to forget when you're getting ready to paint, you pick up your paint, whether you buy it at Lowe's, wherever you get your paint is, well, a paint stirrer. They're going to shake it for you, but you always want to have a paint stirrer as well. It just helps out, give a little extra, extra love as soon as you get it home. Ron here from uh, Lowe's in West Columbia. We've been talking about painting, getting ready to uh, paint a wall. So we've got the right paint picked out. We've got it all prepped up and good to go. We've taped it off. We did some spackling earlier, and as we talked about, you can see it's pink when it goes on and it becomes white. So this isn't quite ready yet to finish off. We'll do that here a little later on this morning. See, just a little bit of pink in there. That says it's not quite dry, not quite ready yet. Yep, you don't want to sand it until it's all white. All right, very good. All right, let's go ahead and get into painting. So we've got a couple of areas we've simulated squaring off here. But uh, what is really the, the good technique, the right amount of paint and things like that? We've got our Valspar paint right here. Let me slide that over to you. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start with the brush, first of all. Well, it's going to be... And you want to have enough paint on your brush, but you don't want to have too much on there. Okay, because you want it to drip down too much, right? Nope. Okay. And you want to go back and forth, what you indicated. So in this round, we'd go up and down. If you uh -huh. put a second coat on, you want to go left and right. And you just uh, ensure that you're getting the coverage everywhere. You can see sure. how it leaves a little bit of lines in there. but. And you don't want to go in one level. You don't want to go left, right, and both? Or can it, is it okay? Does it matter well, if you do both? Like everything, that? But Oh, you got a little drippage. You got a little drippage there, Ron. All right, there you go. Very good. Oh, look, you, you've done this before. You've done this before. Don't tell my wife. Look, <laughs> really nice. Of course, one of the tools we can have in here, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and simulate an edge here. I've got, I've got a big stir. So take an edge. This is kind of a great tool as well. It does not discount using the edger tape for sure. But the same thing, though. You want just enough in there, right? There we go. All right, it's an exact science, this painting here, DIY stuff at Lowe's. All right, so here's our edge. So what are you going to do with that? Oh, that's really, that's really nice and easy. It makes a nice sharp edge down the row. And then you go ahead and take a brush and finish off beyond the edge, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you would then roll the outer. Right. Okay, just like that, really easy. Speaking of rolling, all right, I'm ready to go. I saw Three Stooges, many, many Three Stooges uh, comedies start with a paint roller. So what is the uh, what is the proper technique here? Because we're gonna we're gonna move a technique, little bit. When you're first starting out, you're gonna want to make sure you get your roller good and soaked. Okay. And then you're gonna take all the extra off, just like what you're doing there. All right, just like that. You get the thing. Now everything I've read about in painting, and I painted painted way too many wall in my day, but it starts with a W. What is the what is the the fascination once you get up there? They say go ahead and and do a W. Why is that? Honestly, I, I oh, haven't okay. heard that. I honestly is that just know. for the proper dispersion? I think press? exactly what they're doing okay. there is, is exactly what we talked about earlier about going in different directions. But then when you you can see that you've been back over that area again. I see what you're doing here, and you don't want to spin it. But how do you? You, you obviously want to detach the uh, the um, thing from the wall, right? So you don't get the same dry spots because you'll get a dry spot yes, on there. Yes, you want to keep a keep a wet edge. Okay, while very you're good. working across the wall, you want to keep a wet edge. Don't just do like that, guys. Area. All right, painting 101, real easy stuff, but it is tedious. I'm not gonna lie. But some cool things. And coming up here in a little bit, we're going to show you some really creative things, not just throwing paint on the wall, but some creative things make your room look really awesome as well. We're live in local Lowe's uh, here in West Columbia with Ron. I'm going to keep on painting. And you know, I'll paint the outside of the building today if you want. All I'm right. feeling good about it. Let's keep on going. All right, guys, we are live and local here. Lowe's in West Columbia talking about painting 101, learning how to get the, the right paint selection, the tools you need, and of course, a little technique and skill as well. Ron here from Lowe's. <clears throat> now, we laid down you know, the basic paint. We got this covered. Now, we have plenty of primer on there for you, just to kind of for speed anyway. But you want to do something like this, you can paint it, but then you can also get creative as get well. Get creative, yeah. Let's get creative, shall we? What, what kinds part. of things can you do? Yeah, when you're putting on texture painting. Okay. Texture painting, as it's called. So this it's is a just sponge. a sponge. Okay. It's just a natural sponge out right. of the ocean. That's kind of that's kind of cool for like a kids' room or bathroom, maybe something like that. Yep. That's kind of fun. Very Put easy to do as well. F, yeah. And the same thing with a roller. Yeah, and a roller. Larger areas you can. Okay. Put that on with a roller. So you really get kind of creative in your painting. It's you're almost like your your own Rembrandt, if you will. All right, roll that on. That's gonna look sharp as well. Here we go. Oh, oh, that looks kind of neat. I do like that. Very easy, and you can go with different colors as well, right? Just make it a really uh, a hodgepodge. Uh, pick whatever color you'd like. I love it. We will be happy to make it up for you. And here's the other thing we can do, guys. This is kind of fun down here. You can use tape. This is my own creation down here. You can actually use uh, your painter's tape if you want to spell out words. Of course, W-A-C-H. I thought I'd go ahead and do that. So you can lay this out here. 
make it really easy. Of course, you could put, you know, Tyler if you wanted a name or something like that. So you can kind of get creative as you're painting your room, making it your own on a DIY Wednesday. We're going to put links for you to Lowe's and uh, some of the cool stuff they have on their own website as far as um, some do-it-yourself uh, do and some know-how videos they've got for you as well. I'm going to put it at watch.com. See, look how fun this is going to be. But you know what? Say you get the uh, wall painted, you get everything all done, it's looking sharp, and you decide you want to put hangers on it in pictures. Sometimes that can be a pain in the butt, right? We're going to talk about an easy way to do that here in just a little while. I'm going to keep on painting. Live and local, it's a DIY Wednesday here at Lowe's in West Columbia. That looks really neat. Ron, come to my house and do this for me, will you? <laughs> sure. I guess, well, who has not been here, right? You got a brand new wall, maybe you just painted it, maybe you just moved in a new place. You want to hang a new painting, but how do you do that? How do you find the perfect spot to put it? Well, our friends from Under the Roof Decorations actually sent some things along to, for us to try out anyway. A couple of tools, you can get a perfectly hung picture real quick. By the way, we're live and local at Lowe's. This is kind of, this is a find the center uh, tape measure. Real quick and easy, 48 inches. You go to the bottom, you see the top number there, you go to the bottom number, 48. Well, you find 48 is right there. Oh my gosh, there is the center of your wall. That's pretty neat. So you nice to send your wall. Then you take this tool here, okay? This is a really cool little hole puncher. Ron here from, uh, from Lowe's. Can you help me out just real quick? Hang on to that. So basically with this one, we're going to go ahead and level that thing off, right? On here. Right? Well, let's get your picture hanging on here. Okay. You're going to hold this up to the wall yep. where it's where you want it to be. Right. Where it's where you want it to be, you're going to push in on your picture. Just push in on the picture. When you push in on the picture, you make a divot. It puts a divot in the wall where you're going to be putting your screw. That is so easy. It saves you uh, trying to guess all the, take all the guesswork out of it. A couple of cool ways to hang things too. Of course, uh, you've got some of these wall anchors. Very simple one. You can nail in. This is neat. This is fun. I like to nail. I like to any kind of stuff. So you can, of course, put that nail in right there. It has a little. Uh, it has a little hook on there to hang that paper in. You can take that off. There's also the screw method too. You can take this and you can go ahead and screw that in. Really going to anchor in a, a little heavier uh, weight as well, Ron. But this is really neat. I saw these on infomercials. Do these really work? These this, are these are cool. What are yeah, these called? This is called a monkey hook. Um, this goes monkey in a drywall uh, wall, and you just push and twist. It goes right into the wall, and as it goes in, it stops right you there. You hang that picture on. Let's see if that actually works. Picture wow. hangs right up on there. There is no end to it. Pounds. There is no end to the cool stuff you can find here to get, get and creative. you want to move it? Now, see, I like this too. If something changes, there it is. Pull it back out. And pop it in again. That's beautiful. Look at that. And Guys, it, really it is a. Uh, no hole. Look at that. We can cover that up. You can take a little paint if you want and just mm -hmm. pop that on top and you're done. Guys, it is a DIY Wednesday. It means do it yourself. It's really easy to get things done. Showed you this morning how to paint. We're going to put links for you to, uh, at watch.com for Lowe's and some of the great tutorials they have, as well as some other stuff, some other bonus video that we're going to shoot here for you today as well. But really easy things to get creative. You can paint. You can do really neat things. Remember the tape. Remember to prep. Don't forget the brushes. It's important. You get what you pay for in that stuff, guys. But happiness is likely what you do. And if it's DIY, we got you covered here at Watch.